Okay. We are here. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's your Chapo. Matt, Amber, and myself are coming to you live from the extremely chill vibes of Southern California, the city of angels, Los Angeles. Will Manager on the one. Hollywood, California. But we are joined by a very special guest. Uh, you know him as the from the Young Turks and from Twitch, the very popular streamer Hassan Piker. <laughs> Welcome to the go ch- that far, but well, thank you. I'm I'm also a huge Chapo fan, so this is like kind of intimidating for me. I'm not gonna lie. Well, I, don't I, worry I've been about very it. stoked on this. We're all about chill, positive vibes here. We're Marianne mindset 24 7. We're so chill. There's no way you could possibly, uh, you yeah. know, fuck this up. Yeah, no. We oh, are no, terminally I mean, I'll, chill. I'll still be chill. Like, it's not, yeah. guys, it's not my first rodeo. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be all right. Well, uh, you, were, you were hosting us uh, in your apartment right now. Uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, got a great dog. Yeah, you got a wonderful dog. Um, fish. Hello. But uh, before we get into uh, today's episode, just got to stunt a little bit. Um, Matt, Amber, and I were gifted a trip to the Deadwood movie premiere last night, Kissed by the Gods. Yeah. We are among the, the Eloy, the select, <laughs> the few. And I actually prevented myself from leaning over doing that. By the way, I've never seen this show, but I prevented myself from leaning over in the middle and whispering, there's the Deadwood. <laughs> Which I seriously consider doing because I've been on a lot of edibles since I've been here. And that makes me laugh. And then we went to the, the after party. You know, uh, no Caprino, no spoilers. You know, HBO will revoke my soul if I, if I, if I divulge anything about uh, the Deadwood. However, I will say Matt and I did get to bask in the aura of Ian McShane. I got to say one of the most powerful auras we've ever experienced. Just this absolute power manlet. Just a little, a tiny little gentleman with an open collar and slick back hair, just running that whole room. But yeah, it was like it was like our dream come true. We were at a party with the town of Deadwood. Yeah, they were all there. All the stars were there. All of your favorite uh, cast yep. members. Yeah, so uh, once again, huge thank you to Patton Oswalt for uh, making that dream come true for us. Mm-hmm. So, uh, like I said, we're here in L.A. Uh, with Hassan. Um, Things are things are going great in the news, though. We've um, so we're sort of insulated it from because we're you know cool California vibes. Everyone is chill out here, but uh, the news sucks. Uh, things coming out uh, pretty bad. Uh, where do you want to start? Our upcoming war with Iran, yeah. or our upcoming um, abortion being illegal in the United States? Neither of those are very Marianne. Well, we're gonna we'll let's bring, start with abortion. Okay, let's start. So, Alabama. Uh, has now joined Georgia as the latest state to yeah. pass a... Ohio did it, too. They're all in a contest to see what state's name will be in the name of the historic uh, Supreme Court decision overturning Roe versus Wade. They want it to be Smith versus Alabama, not Smith versus Ohio or whatever the fuck. So They're clout chasers. They literally are. Yeah. This is all about true. chasing clout. That's 100% correct. This clout shit's funny, dude. Yeah. It's funny. It's like, it's so not me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, last night, though, at the movie premiere, I was just thinking there are so many fake LA bitches here, and this so is me. I can't wait to become one. <laughs> Bring me another canapé. <laughs> so, uh, just the, uh, the Alabama, you probably already know about the Georgia one. Just real quick here, reading from the New York Times, a write up of this, just said, What does Alabama do? Uh, the bill that the Republican controlled legislature overwhelmingly passed sought to prohibit abortions at every stage of pregnancy. It includes an exemption in cases uh, for cases where a woman's health is at serious risk, but lawmakers rejected a proposal to add exceptions for cases of rape or incest. Women who have abortions will not be prosecuted under the measure, but if the courts allow the law to stand, doctors could be charged with a felony and face up to 99 years in prison for performing the rece- procedure. So they're at least they're they're withholding the death very penalty. Cool. Yeah. You know? Yeah, very enlightened. I how guess many how many doctors that perform abortions are do you are, do you think are left in this state though? In because, Alabama? Yeah. Very, very few. This sounds like uh it's uh it's it's a little misleading and not that this isn't terrible, but every time one of these things happens, it's generally in a state where like the only providers is like the one planned parenthood or one doctor with like bulletproof, you know, windows. Uh, the issue, first of all, Roe v. Wade is not good legal precedent to defend the right to abortion. Second of all, 
in addition to like a, a firmer legal defense, like we are not going to ever have secure access to abortion without socialized health care. We're just not. And we can't rely on Planned Parenthood because like, you know, God bless them. They certainly helped me out in a pinch. But like they are not they do not have the long game in mind. They are truly a liberal institution with extreme limits. They're not good at defending abortion. Uh, they are being attacked, though, because, I mean, the it's sort of like I feel like you sort of forget how much the anti-abortion people, like what kind of freaks they really are. But they're feeling it. They're feeling themselves now for sure. And they're sharing some very normal thoughts. I just uh, I, I just kept this one courtesy of a uh, wet faced fish lipped freak, uh, Matt Walsh who uh, says of the new law, if a 12-year-old is raped by her father and the father takes her to get an abortion, the evidence of the crime will be destroyed and he will go on molesting his victim for years. If, however, ah. the child is born, his crime will be discovered and she will be rescued from the abuse. So all she has to do is bear her father's child. Let your rape baby Wait, be your it? savior. <laughs> Wait, I don't understand. So, like, hey, Matt Walsh is a father, right? Because he talks about yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, being a father all the time. But this man is obviously never fucked. Because <laughs> like if you if this is your perspective, like do you genuinely think that the only way to prove that someone raped you is if you carry the pregnancy to term at the age of twelve? Well, you have to wait until yeah, the kid looks enough like, like is, you to I be mean, prosecuted. Like, his children are the only way he can prove to other people that he's had sex. So that's the terms he's thinking in. Yeah, like uh, yeah, there's no, there's absolutely no other evidence, forensic no or otherwise, that you could ever use else. to yeah. <laughs> prosecute. Uh, Certainly a rape. not a testimony from a woman. That's why the rape kit backlog exists because like these people got abortions so that's why there's a backlog and they can't test them anymore because there's no children <laughs> there's no proof well uh matt wall seems to think that planned parenthood's main goal is um covering up crimes yeah like there's just sort of like uh harvey that keitel's character in pulp fiction essentially. so much cooler than they are <laughs> well uh so it's if, just they, if they were like actually doing that if they were you know in the dead of night you know running some sort of like uh black market uh, uh, abortion access thing, it, it would legitimately be far more impressive than the fight that they're able to put up at this well, point. Well, the claim, the right wing claims that they sell the baby organs. To make impossible burgers. Yes. <laughs> no, that's not a joke. That's not a joke. <laughs> that is a good yeah. Oh, yeah. I, was, I think it was yeah. Azalea Banks uh, yeah, said it's that. Like, it's up there with the pe Pepsi has stem cells in it. Oh. Well, it doesn't make it taste any better. <laughs> yeah, now, Diet whatever Coke is still Coke. much better. I'm sipping this Diet Coke yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah. I can't drink Pepsi. It's <laughs> awful. Bad. Well, yeah, I mean, you're, you're pro-life, so yeah. Yeah, you can't, you can't, <laughs> you can't you know, launder your conscience that I easily. Um, just to finish up, the New York Times goes on to say, uh, a Senate vote on Tuesday night moved the proposal to Governor Kay Ivey, a Republican who signed the legislation on Wednesday afternoon. To the bill's many supporters, this legislation stands as a powerful testament to Alabamians' deeply held belief that every life is precious and that every life is a sacred gift from God, Ms. Ivey said in a statement. I, I mean, I know you, you can say that, but for states like Alabama and Georgia to say it's a deeply held belief of this state that um, every life is sacred and precious, it's just like, could you, could you do a better job of showing that maybe? Yeah. Because these states do have the highest infant mor maternal and infant mortality rates in America. Yeah, once, you know, you take it to term, then it's your problem. I don't know. I, like, I don't know how we're going to actually deal with this. I hope that this is, like, wrapped up and smashed down really tidy because if it gets drawn out, people will pay attention to nothing but this. I do not put it past Republicans to, like, try to uh, drum up so-called culture wars at the last minute to distract people from um, the, from the fact that like suddenly like Medicare for alls were incredibly popular policy and people are getting behind you know education anti poverty initiatives I think that they could very easily just just keep pulling this shit well into the election so that we pay attention to that to the exclusion of all other things and everyone runs out of energy. But don't you guys think this is kind of a losing battle in some sense because I mean culture wars Republicans are really good at it we all already know this but. Abortion is like that one issue that definitely mobilizes a significant portion of the Republican base, but it's still not something that 
I, I, I don't know. I feel like it's not as popular as Republicans make it out to be. Like in terms of the prospect of making abortion illegal or, yeah. overt or overturning Roe v. Wade? Yeah, or I don't think people are as ex extremely... Um, but also, like, we've lost so much we, whatever. The Democrats have lost so much political footing um, that I, I think it's very easy. And again, too, like, these laws are awful and they shouldn't exist and we need better, you know, legal precedent than Roe v. Wade. But also, the biggest issue is that, like, no one can afford health care of any kind and that it's incredibly difficult to access any of this stuff. I mean, the number of doctors that perf even perform abortions at this point is so low in America and it's been steadily dropping ever since just because it's like not worth it. Like they can't, they can't rationalize the risk to it. They can't find a place to fucking work. Like Planned Parenthood can barely keep its head above water like in terms of like keeping clinics. And then like everything else is like, just death by a thousand cuts. It's like, you know, it's it's austerity anti-abortion activism, mm -hmm. you know, like, which is probably more effective at this point than the legal stuff. Uh, I did see, um, in terms of other uh, normal people sharing their normal thoughts, uh, R Ross Douthat today, uh, you know, big, big time anti-abortion. Big boss Ross. Big, big boss Ross. Uh, he seemed to be making the case that, like, um, you can't say that, uh, you know, women's uh, full political equality is you know depends on abortion because you know there are other countries in the west that uh made abortion illegal after roe v wade and you know women were fine in those countries and the examples he used were ireland and chile <laughs> and ireland he, it was he like he really likes those uh you know the, the mass grave countries yeah a big fan of those yeah <laughs> ireland where you go to jail if you uh, if you fly over to like the UK, not anymore. Get, they well, just not yeah. anymore, but uh, not even. Yeah, yeah. very like, recently. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very recently. But um, yeah, like I mean, yeah, we, the land of Magdalene laundries. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Like women's, like yeah, like full political and economic enfranchisement. And by the way, in the Chile, anti-abortion was instituted by Pinochet, by a right-wing dictatorship. Yeah, just misunderstood. Yeah. <laughs> You hate people of color. You shit on Pinochet. <laughs> Sorry, I have to say it. We, yeah, we hate people of color. We hate Pinochet. We hate the Irish. Yeah. Well, actually, uh, you said the magic word. Um, this, this, this is in my queue as well, but we might as well talk about it now. From IrishCentral.com, <laughs> Bernie Sanders says Irish just fight and get drunk. Many people think. <laughs> and uh, this is coming. They up. made it sound like he said it yeah, too, yeah. which is great. And, and uh, what's his name? Uh, Hillary, Hillary Mann uh, General Tom Watson was like, "Well, I guess Bernie just lost the Irish vote." And I love the idea that there's like the Irish <laughs> the vote Irish is vote. still something <laughs> in American <laughs> politics, and the, the extent that it does exist, they're all Republican, <laughs> like Blue Lives Matter uh, lunatics. Yeah, Irish were slaves too, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, wait, what? I mean, beyond like you know what. Uh, group you march in for St. Patrick's Day like does he think that there's like a legitimate like Irish American community at this point yeah they're called the police <laughs> <laughs> and the city of Boston yeah but no this is um, they of course were are, are digging into the uh, the archives of this the recently rediscovered because you know everything about there they're trying to find anything about Bernie and they discovered his public access show from Vermont oh my god I mean, we, have we talked about trope. this yet every time so they good. come for him he only becomes more powerful <laughs> so uh we I, like the public access show is wonderful yeah and oh it's so great he's adorable my favorite is when he like talks to a baby but like it's like a person and he's like hello <laughs> <laughs> no I, my favorite is when he he's talking to like a group of like first graders and he's like have any of you ever seen the drug cocaine yeah 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 <laughs> and, then, got that yayo. <laughs> and then one of them was like do you mean coca-cola and he was like no the drug cocaine but uh so apparently on and then he called the kid stupid afterwards yeah. i think you're stupid so uh it says bernie and, and they're making it sound like he gave voice to like the opinion that the irish are leery if he had drunken speaking <laughs> the truth. Uh, opinion so he said, which is the real racism so <laughs> bernie sanders called irish drunks and fighters in an old television clip that has resurfaced about stereotypes in one of his old public access tv shows which have just been located presidential candidate bernie sanders says the typical view of the irish is they get in fights because they are drunks all the irish are drunks bernie speaks of the community <laughs> is full of footage of sanders discussing relevant issues yeah like irish yeah. people being violent drunkards 
Look, uh, it's a problem, and he's speaking truth to power. His remarks on the Irish were part of a conversation about stereotypes. Black smell, Sanders said, he was told as a kid. Jews were greedy and selfish, Irish were drunks, and the Italians were mafia. <laughs> wait, oh, wait, this is from that part? That, yeah. Because I remember, I remember the, the first expose that happened in America when they, they cut out the Irish part, but they only talked about the Jews and the blacks that Bernie Sanders... Well, yeah, it was, he was, was like addressing couple, school kids. Yeah. yeah, it was the same thing. And, he was, and they didn't talk about the second part of the conversation well, at he was all. Broadly, like negative yeah, he was like expressing stereotypes to <laughs> yeah. show that like he was like, this is what I was told, and like they are foolish well, and, yeah, and no, wrong. So, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's the such Irish a scam. press that picked up on it, too, and of course they left it with like the Irish thing and didn't mention the, you know, whatever, greedy Jews part <laughs> and like... I, uh, what's up their ass? What do they got against Bernie? Well, I think it's pretty clear if like reading uh, this from irishcentral.com that, you know, I mean, whoever wrote it... You're just happy someone's talking about you. Well, I mean, I think who wrote it probably wasn't drunk at the time because I think it is pretty clear what the context <laughs> is here. But uh, yeah, no, the Irish vote, Bernie, come on, do better. Uh, <laughs> yes, it'll every, be all right. I don't, what I don't understand is like every time we find old Bernie Sanders footage that gets unearthed, I mean, he first of all, he looks exactly the same. Like, why yeah. does he look like he's seventy five when he was like supposed to be forty? Well, he's me, never changed policies and never changed looks. Matt yeah. and I were talking about this. That's sort of like the best move you can do for a politician or like character actor. Look old early, like then yeah. you'll look the same, like, like Ian McShane. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 they show like clips before the thing. They showed these. Uh, they showed a bunch of while we were waiting. We were sitting down waiting for the show to start. They had this montage of pictures from Deadwood. And they were pictures from the new movie and from the old show. And you could easily tell which it was with every character except for McShane. He was like, is that from now? Is that from this movie or is that from the original show? You didn't know because he's had the exact same face. And we thought like Philip Baker Hall has yes. had the same look for Danny decades. Danny DeVito too. Danny yeah. DeVito, yep, yes. Yep. An yeah. early old. So that's a, it's a king move to be an early old. And like, you know, you read that statistic that uh, when he filmed the f movie Cocoon, Wilford Brimley is like my age. Yeah. Now. <laughs> Insane. Insane. And you know, he still looks the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a it's a boss move. But then the other thing that I I uh, get upset about whenever I see these old Bernie footage is like I feel like he was way cooler back then. Oh, like yeah. he would just come out and say it. Like he would just say it. Like well, he'd be like, "Yeah, I'm on I'm against all uh, US uh, foreign intervention." Like across the board, I'm with the the USSR is not that bad, actually. Things like that, where I don't know, I feel like he was way cooler back then, and now he's kind of uh, gotten a little bit softer with old age. Well, yeah, yeah I think so. or well, maybe he's, he's hiding his power level. Who knows? He's but running that, for president, and also, uh, I think you're just not allowed to call kids dumb anymore. They would be mad if a presidential candidate did that, and I think. What we expect of a presidential candidate now is uh, a softer kind of thing, which is to our detriment. I would love it if Bernie was, one, loud about wars, loud about being anti-imperialist, and two, just calling kids dumb. Look at these little dipshits. <laughs> well, Amber, you said... I mean, Biden does it, and they well, love for it. I was just going to say, Biden is going around saying, like, millennials are stupid and lazy, and, like, give yep. me a break that, you know, you, you think your life is hard. Uh, so I, I don't know, maybe you can get away with that. But then again, like children and millennials are different because we associate millennials with like ungrateful, you know, people in their 20s or right. like, you know. Yeah, versus the Zoomers who are definitely much better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we're goes. The fucking well, Fortnite generation. <laughs> well, you know, Sam, we're going to talk to you a little bit about about your contact with the uh, the Zoomer generation via, sure. via Twitch. But uh, just the last thing I want to uh, talk about Alabama. And obviously... Uh, this sucks and like there's very little that's uh, funny or entertaining about it, save for the names of some of these Alabama state legislators who voted for to pass this abortion ban. Yes. And I looked at this and I swear to God, I had to look up the names to make sure this wasn't a work. Like mm. someone just photoshopped it like the the teen roast thing yeah, that yeah. Rob Wiseman did. Chris Del Chris. Yeah. Curb Lurbs. And this is like a throwback because this was like the classic Teacot era of Twitter where, you know, one of the original and greatest Kush bomb bits were just Teacot names. Curb would... Carruthers lives forever. Um, <laughs> so let's go through some. Like, yeah, me and Felix sort of called a lot of the current world into existence in about 2014. We just pulled these people out of the ether. All right, let me go through some of the, the highlights here. I really shouldn't have done all that tweeting from a Ouija board. <laughs> All right, Larry Stutz. Hell yeah, Larry Stutz and on those O's. Tim Melson. Tim Melson. Shay Shellnut. 
No. <laughs> you know, it's like these are the almost names where it almost sounds like a real Shell name. Nuts. They're just uncanny. Shim, Shay Shellnut. This is one of the best. Will Barfoot. Barfoot is legal, folks. Uh, yeah. In Alabama, <laughs> Barfoot is legal, but abortion is not. Yep. <laughs> Uh, and then, of course, this is the best of them all. This is the most Teacot name. I could not believe this is real. Garland Gudger. Garland no. Gudger. No. First of all, Garland. making an alliterative name is child abuse. <laughs> but both of those are fake. Garland, I feel like I, I had some sort of rendezvous with you in my head like five years ago. I saw you as a vision of apocalypse coming towards me, like Randall <laughs> Tex Cobb in Raising Arizona. And then I gave you birth. I birthed you into existence with my <laughs> incantation. This is the kind of Western culture that we're trying to preserve by <laughs> making sure that abortions are illegal so that everyone has to carry their pregnancies to term and then we can come up with more creative white names like this. Yep. I can't <laughs> wait so for good. President. I cannot wait for President Bunch Huggins <laughs> to finally institute oh God. the cleansing that we need. Uh, Streaming yeah. Fortnite right now on Twitch. <laughs> Like, yeah, the, thinking the, about his next move. Yeah, yeah. The, no, the Antichrist is alive right now, and he is doing Fortnite yep. on Twitch his right name now. Is we Bunch don't... Huggins, fear him. <laughs> yeah, it's that fourteen-year-old girl Soph on YouTube who is like, uh, you know, calling Muslims the sand N word and stuff. She's yeah. gonna be the next president. Yeah, probably. she will. Yeah. Um, well, hopefully, we'll take some of these kids' uh, skills that they've learned playing Fortnite and apply them to our next war, which looks like it's gonna be with. Iran. You know what? I really do feel like we could kill two birds with one stone here. Gather some of these Zoomers, just airdrop them over to Iran. As you know, like the, the, the Iranians were always famous for their child way, soldier waves. Mm -hmm. We could just do something similar with yeah. our excess They're feral psycho children. feral Zoomers. Yeah. Uh, this because is otherwise, I'm going to have to like dance for them in the afterscape uh, <laughs> in exchange for like canned goods and a, and a thimble full of. of Rusty water. Uh, we'll just oh have God. to be like, hey kids, you are you, are you yeeting? Are we yeeting today? <laughs> and they're like, no, we're gonna fucking. I'm gonna make an iPhone case out of your back flesh. <laughs> <laughs> oh so God. I have. To, I would rather we send them to Tehran, thin out the ranks a bit. Well, you may get your wish, Matt, because uh, this is like. I just feel like it's a, it's evidence of the time this we live in now that like. We all know, like, we all remember, like, the Iraq War and, like, how bullshit that was. But I really feel like they tried as hard as possible to sell that it and was roll that out. Press. Full court press with, like, the UN presentation and the media and everything. Like, they, they had don't need to tell us all hands anymore. on board with this. I just think, like, they're, it, this is just lazy. The shit they've come out with this, like, Saudi oil tanker they just said were attacked by Iran with no visible evidence of any kind of damage. And it's it's like, also just they know that they don't have to. They know they can phone it in. We've already resigned ourselves no to the fact that we're going anymore. to war all the time, everywhere in the world, without any sort of popular support. I just want to read from the, the Wall Street Journal account of this. And, like, you know, the Wall Street Journal, I think, is, like, a, a pretty good paper of record. And, like, if you read through the lines, you can just see what... U.S. says Iran likely behind ship attacks. Officials say two Saudi oil tankers and vessels from Norway and the UAE were damaged. As someone else pointed this out, but like, I feel like when it was the USS Maine and the Gulf of Tonkin, at least we pretend, at least they were our ships. Yeah. We were pretending. Yeah. Were, I volunteered. Like, you will not go after my best friend, Norway. <laughs> <laughs> or no, no, it's like the fucking UAE and shit. It's like, yeah, I volunteered to be just turned into human hamburger to avenge some fucking sheik's slave yacht. <laughs> <laughs> or a Saudi oil, was, yeah. oil tanker. Yeah. Yeah. Is that actually full of all their pet falcons? <laughs> Oh no, somebody scuffed the, the yacht from the end of Taken. <laughs> uh, we must we must get the we must pay them back with blood. Even the people that they're using are the same people. They're just plagiarizing the same talking points. It's John it's Bolton. Identical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything is identical to Iraq. It doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> See the, th the whole they're gang's in a, here. They're in a problem though, is that in terms of the the, the media world and, 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 and like the, the the obstacles to action, yeah, nothing matters anymore. They could go to war with Iran tomorrow with, and not feel like they have to build up. Uh, uh, they don't have to manufacture consent the way that the Bush administration did. Problem is, this is post-Iraq, so we're not in any shape to take fucking Iranians. And the, like, the thing pushing against this, I think, at the corridors of power are actual military guys. Yes. We're like, dude, 
I'm going to get my ass. Oh, wait, yeah, we're going to open up a two front war against Iran and Venezuela with the current <laughs> state. And like, not only that, but like, I, I think we'll like just have it all done by drones, which we which will be driven by the zoomers <laughs> that Hassan plays with all day. Yeah. I mean, that's not going to cut it against Iran or no. even Venezuela. <laughs> no, you, can I mean, do, you can do like a limited strike or something to try to like knock out the nuclear program. But it's pretty clear that they don't give a shit about the nuclear program because no, of the way they no, tore no. up the fucking agreement they had that was working. It's about causing... Which a, was a soft-ass move on yeah. behalf of Iran, by the way. That's my take. On, <laughs> oh, that's your yeah. hot take. <laughs> soft-ass move, dude. Don't negotiate with the United States, man. Don't negotiate yeah. with fucking Paris. Yeah. Don't Why do would you waste Paris. your fucking yeah. time talking to the United States? Oh, yeah, anything we agree and agree to can be canceled on a whim by the brain-damaged, sexual-assaulting <laughs> game show host. Uh, but, I, you know, Amber, to your point, like, I feel like... Yeah, everyone is so beaten down that they're not even trying to sell this bullshit. However, if it did happen, unlike the Iraq war or war on terrorism, I think it would immediately be overwhelmingly unpopular. Like, I Especially just feel like, considering what it would entail. Right. Yeah. Well, uh, again, we cared more about those two very large buildings than we do about a Norwegian boat. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. We're so far from 9-11. We just have this ambient. What we have left is an ambient Islamophobia, which we kind of never dealt with. Uh, but the, the 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 payback desire has dissipated, and now all it has is this remorse about, oh man, we really fucking stepped into this. I mean, I just want to read from this Wall Street Journal piece to just like give you a sense of like how lazy this shit is. An initial U.S. assessment indicated Iran was likely behind the attack on two Saudi Arabian oil tankers and two other vessels damaged over the weekend near the Strait of Hormuz. A U.S. official said a finding that, if confirmed, would further inflame military tensions in the Persian Gulf. The assessment, while not conclusive, was the first suggestion by any nation that Iran was responsible for the attack and comes after a series of U.S. warnings against aggression by Iran or its allies and proxies against military or commercial vessels in the region. Oh, convenient that we made that warning right before this happened. So well, because said, and they were and they were citing they were citing some sort of rising threat that has there's been no actual proof of. Nothing yeah, they happened. just totally yeah. made up. At least when Col- and it got fucking reported in the New York Times as. Uh, uh, Iranian uh, threats in the region. No questioning about where the fuck that idea came from. And again, when 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 Colin Powell uh, went before the UN, at least they had like an artist rendition of what his mobile biological yeah, yeah. weapons labs right. would look like. Yeah. yeah, where's the concept art? <laughs> Alex J. Brady, if you're out there, please <laughs> please contribute. But it just says here, um, the U.S. official who declined to be identified. Okay didn't offer details about what led to the assessment or its implications for a possible U.S. response. The U.S. has said in the past week that it was sending an aircraft carrier, an amphibious assault ship, a bomber task force, and an anti-missile system to the region after it alleged intelligence showed Iran posed a threat to its troops. I think they just wanted an excuse to take out the amphibious assault ship for a spin. (laughs) Like, first of all, I don't even know what that is. Isn't that just a submarine? That think, no, an amphibious assault ship is designed to take troops from water to uh to a beach to a beachhead. I think it's like a giant version of like the D Day yeah. crafts okay. that they used to land on a beach. Yes. Very cool. We have to we have to make use of them somehow. So <laughs> yeah. you know they're just testing them out. I no, think but they I, do just want to like test out toys that aren't helicopters because we're not good at those anymore. I mean, I I, I wish Felix was here because this move to send the the aircraft carrier group to the Persian Gulf like does strike me like a like a Felix Ohio guy character kind of thing to do. You know, just be like. Yo, I'm I'm gonna drive my car in front of your house, and you, buddy, you better see what the fuck I'll do if you if you throw if you throw a can at it. Well, but the presence of U.S. vehicle there, of U.S. forces, that increases the likelihood of some sort of contact, which is what you want. You want them to yeah, fire no, shots, they're they're rolling, they're they're swinging the, their arms and yeah. saying, "I'm not hitting you, yes, I'm not hitting yes, you, I'm not are. hitting you." Yeah, I'm gonna close my eyes and kick, and if you get hit, that's your fault. It's and, not even saber rattling. It's like. Baby rattle rattling. It's very immature. There's a top British general in the U.S.-led coalition that also contradicted those claims as well. But then the United States was uh, not very happy about that, where it's uh, um, the top British general in the U.S.-led coalition against ISIS said that there's no increased threat from Iranian-backed forces in Iraq or Syria directly contradicting U.S. assertions used to justify military buildup in the region. So It's the wrong kind of expert then. Yeah, they're going to... Just his his career's over. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, unlike the, the the U.S. official, you know, being quoted here, I mean, I'm sure that guy put his name to that. Yeah, Major General Chris uh, Gicka. 
<laughs> okay, never mind. Get never the mind. Fuck out of here. Yeah. yeah, he's made <laughs> up. The US, the U.S. publicly rebuked him. So that, that guy's an op for sure. Oh yeah, and then uh, I saw today also um, future apocalypse starter uh, Senator Tom Cotton. Yes, was Greg uh, Stilson. Uh, I.e., I, the guy who Joe Biden will lose to yeah. in 2024 if uh. he gets in the White House. It, you know, he was on this uh, PBS show, The New Firing Line, with Margaret Hoover, oh. and she was interviewing him about a war with Iran, and like it was so bone chilling because she was like, "Do you, she said like, do you want to go to war with Iran?" And he was just like, "No," <laughs> you know, and I'm just like that, and then like he like, he said a line where he was like, you know, like uh, like what will, what will you know a conflict with Iran be like? And he was just like. Only be two actions, the first one and the last one. Could we win a war with Iran? Yes. That didn't take you a second. Two strikes, the first strike and the last strike. You, uh, yeah. Iran, if you take a swing at me, there's going to be two hits. Me hit you and you hitting all of our fucking military bases with Hezbollah <laughs> car bomb attacks and <laughs> causing our fucking childish. civil society to collapse in two weeks. Uh, it's just, it, it's not even like, it, at least when we used to be uh, horrific war hawks, like the machismo was believable. They didn't sound like, Dermot from Venture Brothers, like arguing about how many people he could potentially beat up. Like, just don't panic, Hank. I've handled this kind of mess before. Why do you think they used to call me the Wolf? Nobody calls you that. Well, they did back in my old neighborhood when they weren't calling me psycho. At least there was some kind of conservative. This is so too... childish and embarrassing. Iran You're embarrassing is just us. at the end of the day, Iran is too big a fucking task. It's too big of a country. It's got too big of a military. Uh, it's just it's too no, big no of a bite that. to chew on. And basically, all you have is this this schizophrenic response because you have elements in this in the government who truly believe that we have to take out Iran for a bunch of reasons, and ones who believe no that that would undermine our long term interests because of the difficulty of the task given our stretched military. I mean, we're fighting seven fucking wars simultaneously, and this would be a bigger uh, this would be a bigger project than all of them put together. Invading and holding Iran, it absolutely would. And so they're like, what the fuck are you talking about? And that stalemate is why we see shit like this. Because when you get a chance, you push on the lever and say, well, maybe we can spark a confrontation, get something moving. And then all of a sudden, all those uh, institutional roadblocks, they fall away because it's happening too fast. And just uh, Leslie says, um, if they do anything, they will suffer greatly. We'll see what happens with Iran, President Trump right. said, while meeting with Hungary's Prime Minister Viktor Orban at the White House earlier on Monday. That, that whole quote, like if you listen to it, it's actually like they make him sound less stupid and childish by cutting out the things he said before and after that because he's doing the repetitive sundowning thing when he was giving the quote. And when he talks about the foreign policy, that's when the press that usually makes fun of him and questions him and undermines all of his claims and says he's a big dumb baby right. all of a this sudden time. decides, whoa, this is serious stuff. We have to take him seriously and we're not going to undermine, underline the fact that he's a sundowning old clown. Well, because all the institutions that uh, the press has to maintain are doing their cost-benefit analysis right now, just like you said, trying to figure out if it's worth it to, to do boots on the ground military warfare with Iran, which it won't be. Yeah. So, you know, that's why they're... But but if push came to shove and they realized that this would be beneficial for the yeah. military-industrial complex, without a doubt, they would do it. Right now, right. Our, the thing stopping all these... Uh, any new wars is all of our old wars. That's yeah. basically it. It's the fact that we have all well, these open that, accounts on the books is the only thing stopping us from doing this stuff. That and, uh, as Liz Warren said, climate change. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was, a, that, was a, that, was a good, that was a gem from, uh, from uh, Elizabeth Warren. Boy, today. she's really trying to play both sides. It's amazing because it's such an easy pitch. Not only is the uh, military a blood-soaked imperial monster on the world stage, it is a huge financial albatross around the neck of a country that trying to provide any kind of social safety net because of how much it fucking costs uh and it's the world's number one institutional carbon producer yeah. the number one force for climate change it's in the world it's a death machine both actively and passively and so if the pitch to say cutting it drastically it reduces the mayhem and violence in the world it cuts it gives us money we can send use to do other things like green energy reinvestment and 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 greening and decarbonizing uh energy and all that stuff uh, uh it, it allows us to do uh that uh and it fucking cuts greenhouse emissions mm. 
To the degree to which you cut the military and like shut bases and stop produ- stop it doing stuff, that's the degree of p- carbon that is not being replaced. No one else is putting in carbon that you stop putting in. You are net reducing carbon. It's a three for one. All you got to say is cut the fucking thing. Not this shit about she, we're going to reinvest it and change it so it's more effective and efficient. What the fuck are you even talking about now? She can't. She can't All do it. Inside her voters. head right now, she's realizing... She's come to a conflict that will not change. It's just, you know that video of turkeys just circling a tree? That's what's happening in her brain right now. Yes. It's like a friend, a friend of mine had that had like the, he laid out the logic in like a formal proof or whatever. And he said, the military is a massive part of the problem. The problem also has become a problem for the military. So I will use the cause of the problem to solve the problem. So the problem doesn't get in the way of the cause of the problem doing the thing that it mostly is the problem. Yes, Exactly. And it's because, and this is the re- people want to. How say, do you do that? She's got like a she's got like a tesseract brain. Well, a lot of well, it's a Mobius lot, strip. A lot of leftists say, well, why not Warren? I like Warren. She's got all these great policies. She's a woman. I feel like I'm not going to get the Bernie bro thing. Come on, let me let me support Warren. I want to support Warren. And what? And, you, and there's a lot of there are differences uh, in terms of their policies, but the real difference comes down to the fact that there are these uh, incommensurabilities at the heart of American politics. These genuine conflicts that can't be overcome with language. And when and Bernie has an idea what to do with them, you can argue whether it's possible or not. But it's the idea of the political revolution, where you have outside forces, organized American citizens, putting pressure on government to so, to do what is best for the American people. That's the theory. So it's like if there's a conflict, you bulldoze it and you challenge She's it outright, too and you diverse. bring in people to help you defeat it from outside. If Elizabeth Warren believes in the old-fashioned idea of at the center of this, there are conflicts, and then what do you do? You try to triangulate around them. And so, but everybody, every certainly every Democrat who gets in office with that rhetoric, when it comes to the reality of triangulating, ends up always doing it in the terms of how of uh, of of the business right. as usual yeah. and traditional politics, and it all gets compromised into oblivion. She's trying to do the Obama thing, but yes. honestly, she's not crafty enough. Exactly. Like, and it's she, like, it's not and just, Obama. there are substantial policy differences, but also Liz Warren is too conflict averse and she's goofy. That's she the goofy. dumbest she thing. That was just dumb. That was just embarrassingly dumb. If Bernie, Obama was, yeah. we, I'm sure he would try and do something similar in, you know, yeah. in, in his Ber- peak, in his heyday, yeah. but he wouldn't have sounded that no. stupid doing it. Bernie has a theory of change and none of the other ones do. Period. Here's my idea. All of our aircraft carriers, they're wonderful. They're beautiful, beautiful ships, folks. We take the giant decks that they use to launch air, like fighter jets, solar panels. <laughs> we make them giant Boom. floating solar panels, and the, the boats gotcha. will go where the sun is I gotcha. all the time. But they'll be like trailing a giant cable, or like a USB cord or something. <laughs> I, I, look, there's still some kinks to be worked out, right. but I think there's... Right. There's I, something there. There's, I think something there's, there. there's something very liberal about taking the military and like turning it green as though that's the only problem that we have with the military. <laughs> it's military's legitimately... Existence. That level of liberalism, you usually have to go to Israel to find something like, you know, vegan IDF soldiers. To find something that liberal in, in mindset... You usually have to, yeah. You usually have to go to Israel. They're they're the best at it. But we're catching up with this whole greening of the military. Military, but gay. Yeah. (laughs) So the military. It's the military, and they're just green. Right. They're way. We're gonna paint the tanks green. Okay, I'm hearing the tanks are already green. (laughs) (laughs) Well, um, uh, going uh, moving on now from um, potentially uh, real wars to. You know, the, the virtual wars, the combat that takes place every day in our video game systems. Uh, Aslan, I wanted to talk to you about uh, your experiences, um, you know, uh, being on Twitch and the kind of, uh, I don't know, like a sort of weird and very specific culture of Twitch that, you know, these kids are into. You know, our, our, our friends are sort of the Chapo Satellite, the FYM boys. They have their own uh, Twitch stream uh, that, uh, that we love and they're doing a lot of stuff with that. I Felix's try to get training. Them, I try to get them to to participate in Twitch culture as much as possible, but they refuse for some weird reason. So don't let them fool you. Like they are the boomers of Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that is oh frightening. Holy yeah. shit! No, oh no, my no. god! You are yeah. about they are they already seem just hopelessly gone. Yeah, yeah, but also you are about to get anthrax in the mail from Felix for that comment. No, no, like. he knows. He know. I try to get him to get like emotes and stuff like <laughs> BTTV emotes. I'm not going to get too deep into it. Some of the people that follow you already uh, follow my channel and, and Chapo yeah, as well, some, obviously. I yeah. that, but um, 
I mean, I'm interested, like the thing, like I know you've 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 you told me about this before, and I and I've talked about it with like uh with with Aaron and Felix and them, like you know my my prejudice going into this, like thinking about what the culture and community of Twitch is like, is you know like the the gamer stereotype of sort of reactionary incel young man, which is why I joined the platform originally. Is this is not a joke. So when I first joined Twitch, I was like, this is relatively new. Uh, I need a place to build habitual viewership anyway because I'm on fucking Facebook duty at TYT and everyone uh, that watches Facebook news now is like 68 years old right. plus. So it's awful. I mean, they vote, but whatever. They don't care for my leftist takes regardless. They think I'm trying to separate the party as a Kremlin agent. So <laughs> um, so I got on Twitch because I knew that like these this is a young audience, mostly male, probably prone to reactionary politics. But... Their political idols are a bunch of idiots. I mean, they, they don't know anything. And and all the takes that they've heard, uh, all the takes that they've uh, heard about, like, uh, leftist politics have been just straw men from the likes of Steven Crowder and, and Ben Shapiro and, and all these other like, people. Yeah, so, YouTube, like, pettits. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's always... As they've you been guys left also, to their own devices, and it's not good. It's very Lord of the Flies. Yeah. And, but at the same time, Twitch is this, like, huge phenomenon that's, like... Seem like seemingly inaccessible to like someone like me, but like you know, among the the Zoomers, the yeah, teens, it's super it's, insular. So most people don't know what the hell's going on at Twitch, but they're so they are so active. Like they are so active. They're young. They're constantly on the platform, and they watch. I mean, they watch my streams for you know, six hours on average, which is insane. They're all neats. So they all love Andrew Yang. They all love <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So they all want a thousand dollars. They want their neat bucks, and you know. So they open your third and, eyes. Yeah. What is the money to you <laughs> if your Marianne. soul is is encumbered uh, but, and and darkened? Uh, <laughs> just look into the light of Marianne mindset. <laughs> but uh, but Hassan, like uh, the other thing that I I was again like you know uh, maybe foolishly surprised to discover is that I mean like like that kind of reactionary thing that that's there on Twitch but there like a big there is a big big subculture on on Twitch of like queer and trans teenagers. Oh yeah. And like that's yeah. like a big part of uh the culture. Like when we got here you were trying to explain to Matt like their weird remixed music videos featuring yeah, sound this, effects from gay porn. Yeah, there's this gay porn that's very famous in Japan and Why is it famous in Japan? I don't <laughs> why, know. Why are there famous <laughs> gay porns in Japan? I don't know. How there aren't any really famous gay there. porns in America. It's just every well, time you know this about. is what happens. Every time someone tries to explain this to me, it only raises more questions. <laughs> yeah. That's what Japan is. It's just this horrifying onion of context. So, yeah, there's gay porn in Japan uh, with this white dude and another Japanese gay porn star. And they took sounds. They took, like, little sound bites from the gay porn of, like, ass slapping and men uh, saying, like, oh, fuck, that's so tight. Things of that nature. <laughs> and they <laughs> remix every nature. song. Yeah, they remix every popular song with those sounds. And that's, like, a big part of Twitch culture for some reason. I don't know who started it. I don't know why they do it. It's very weird because on the one hand, um, you know, they're calling everybody soy boys and whatever. But on the other hand, they're like, oh, no, but we're all gay, which is weird. I don't know what's I, I don't know. Are they doing the it? Zoomers are hard to decipher. But I mean, are respect. they doing it ironically that like uh, uh, just using soy as an insult because it's just no, like, I don't think so. I think yeah. that I think that the next generation is way more open minded about the fluidity of sexuality. But they still like they still care about like white ethno state stuff, obviously. But they're like, oh, no, you can be gay and a Nazi at the same time. <laughs> oh, it's great. Like That's that. wonderful. Well, yeah. I mean, so these proud things of them. aren't necessarily mutually exclusive. Like, Certainly not. Uh, Tell, ask Ernst Rome. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, like, in, in, in your interaction. <laughs> that would be a fantastic gay bar. <laughs> ask Ernst. <laughs> But um, in in your uh, you know in in your streaming and interactions with this community, like coming from a like a left wing uh, perspective or point of view, like what what do you find is like is it, what what resonates to them or like do you find that you are convincing them or is it oh yeah like so like 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 what what about a point of view that you're bringing yeah like like what do they respond to you about that the memes for the most part and also here's the thing but also do they know what you look like yeah. Okay, uh, so it's okay, I, I, guess, I guess we understand why you have a okay, big so queer you, teenage audience. Yeah, so there's, there's that. Uh, I have a it don't hurt. Audience. Um, for sure, that's definitely a part of it. But um, the thing is, like, 
they don't have a lot of access to proper leftist representation. Uh, that's why I love Chapo, because you guys do a great job of, of representing leftist values by being dirtbags, but also talking about the material, things that are important, right? Um, and, and they're definitely fed up with all of the, uh, the, the cultural elements that we talk about, the, the minutia that, that don't actually impact people's lives, especially if you're apolitical and privileged in some respects. So when someone comes in and is like, oh, no, both parties are pretty bad, and mm -hmm. here's what we should be doing, like the rest of the world, and, um, and this is why it's wrong, they're, and, and as a leftist, I'm not uh, similar to the hysterical blue-haired uh, college, uh, you know, college SJW compilation video uh, representative of the left, they're like, oh, this is a little different than what I expected the left to be like. Right. But at the, but at the same time, like, you get the feeling that, like, in their social context, like, offline, like, that these are, like, sort of outcasts, you know, the, the outcasts of the communities that they're in are just, they don't feel like they fit in. Oh, and, for sure. I mean, dude, and, they spend does six anyone, to eight hours on Twitch. But literally, does anyone that age fit into anything anymore? I mean, like, these, like, they seem really atomized. Like, all young people now seem really See, that's atomized. that's where I really do feel like, and I try to resist this, I really do feel like computers are fundamentally changing social relationships because... Well, the internet. Every, not computers, per se, Grandpa. Okay. <laughs> the, the computer is... <laughs> oh, you got a big bank of uh, spinning cartridges. No, he likes, he likes the computers because that's where he watches his programs. But yeah, other than... The, program, <laughs> the, computer. No, the internet, because... Because, as you say, at that age, nobody fits in anywhere. Yeah. But in the old days, you didn't have a choice. Now, if that pressure is too much, and for most of us it is at some point or another, you can opt out. You can drop out and go online and have a simulated version of right. that life where there's much less risk and danger and awkwardness. Social and, simulacrum. And, yeah, 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 simulacrum with only the good stuff, only yeah. the dopamine. And so a lot of people making that choice, and that's a choice previous misfits didn't have, and that made them sort of push through it. And now a lot of people don't feel they have to push through it because they could just go online. They can retreat, yeah. Exactly. And the, the option yeah, the of retreat is shouldn't scary. be... The option of retreat shouldn't be there. You Maybe you need to be, like, bullied a little bit. Just yeah. a little bit. <laughs> just push, go, keep they going. Said, uh, there's some your head like, down and go through it. There's some psychiatrist that was saying, like, um, the way to healthy growth is uh, a series of small to mid-sized manageable traumas. Yeah, like yeah, too, too big, and and it's like you're just you're gonna crack your brain like an egg, but nothing. You just become gelatinous, yeah. you know. Yeah, I think that's why they're so malleable on YouTube, and and all that right wing commentary gets super popular there because it's a sense of uh, belonging. If you feel like you're pushed away and and disenfranchised mm -hmm. as like a a young boy living in Idaho or whatever, uh, then you have a sense of community of like-minded individuals who also hate the SJWs and the, and the libtards well, and the like fact, to own them. Well, the fact, too, that these things are so... Like, the, the YouTube video thing are just, like, a guy talking into a screen. I mean, that is... I mean, we joke about podcasts being friendship simulators or whatever, but this is, like, a conversation simulator, like yeah, there's no they're they're really low quality they don't like light anything they don't go to it for that that's not what it's about there's not even any interest in making it look you know like a produced show half the time these people want their dad jordan peterson to give them a lecture like that's literally what it is and they've gotten to the point where they can only recognize interactions that come that way i mean i'm yeah. sure that most of these people who had their mind blown by jordan peterson had been told by their parents to fucking clean the room about 500 goddamn <laughs> times. Yeah. And it never for a second penetrated because it was in the because they've been on the internet since birth. awful meat space that they don't get to yeah. edit. And it's only one, somebody like goes through like the signifiers that tell them that there's someone to listen to. And they say, have you considered cleaning your room? And they're like, oh my God, you're a genius. <laughs> no, I but like, so like the, there's there's just a, there's a social aspect to Twitch, but like you know the, the the meat and potatoes and tell me if I'm wrong is still just playing video games with your friends or watching. Yeah, that's other changing people too. Play video games. It's becoming more of an open source, just interact like interaction of any kind or commentary like what you're doing. Or yeah, and and luckily and surprisingly, uh, they're not. I mean, they've only come down hard on me once or twice. One for watching a Michael Moore documentary and there was gore, so I got banned. Uh, was it when then, they kill the rabbits? And, uh, <laughs> no, 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 it, no, it was actually, I was talking about Latin American intervention, oh, and okay. I think it was like a part from Bowling for uh, Columbine, and there was gore, like real dead bodies. Okay, yeah. It was huh. a bullshit band. But, yeah, yeah. But ultimately, like, I mean, what I was going to say is like, they're, 
they are pretty good at banning hate speech and they're they're really hands on so um it's more moderated a than a lot of yeah, the internet yeah there's not a lot of yeah. right wingers on the platform and and there are a lot of left wingers now on the platform a lot of leftists like destiny's another one who you guys share uh, members in your community with uh, who debates like all of these people on the alt right uh -huh. and also uh, on the right and he does a really good job and um he has that same like Ben Shapiro style of like logic and reasoning and I'm going to debate you I, he's not a chud I swear he's he's cool but uh, he does a really good job of converting a lot of these kids because the, all they care about is the is their side winning or being on the winning team mm -hmm. and ownage and bloodshed I well, mean for a certain age group of Man, like we kind of like laugh about the idea of debate because it's sort of a, you know, a prissy schoolboy's uh, pursuit or whatever. Um, it's the it's the masculinity of nerds. But for a certain age of young boys, like that's how they do things. I remember like like Angela was talking about when she taught. She said like, you know, young women are and I think a lot of this has to do with like just sort of being socialized in kind of conformist ways where um, you're more likely to be punished for a dissident opinion if you're a girl. And guys, she said, sort of like really young ones, like, you know, 17, 18, start out by just picking a position and being like, this is the thing I believe. And But that doesn't mean that they're actually committed to it because it's just like, it's just the shoes they're wearing that week or whatever. And so there are more receptive to... Like it's like it's almost like a youthful like stage of development like debate or something like that, and we've kind of eliminated the idea of conversation mm. from like political discourse. But when you are that age, like especially if you're maybe a guy and you sort of like are just trying on an identity for the first time, like you kind of have to talk to them. There's no getting around talking it's, to them. The thing is, they love it because it's mental MMA. Mind, <laughs> mind combat. Yeah, it's mind, mind combat. combat. They don't want to watch the crude spectacle of the, those jocks punching each other. <laughs> But a mental combat? Now that's that's entertaining. That would also make sense as to why Ben Shapiro is so popular is by being a giant nerd and incredibly yeah. boring and but that's the thing. People say, why would you want to listen to this droning nerd? No one else is doing it because though. you are one and you relate to him. Yeah. It also makes him feel smart too. Oh, like yeah. Sam Harris and and all these other IDW guys. Like, I mean, who is like on his face an idiot? Like, like, yeah, but these people don't yeah, know anything. He's like a genuinely dumb guy. Yeah, but he, what he does is a very good impression of like an intelligent. Person. That's an ad hominem, by the way. Yeah, Will, okay. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, uh, in terms of like uh, another form of combat, what do you like? What do you make of like the most popular uh, video games that people play? Obviously, like Fortnite. We've joked about it before. Oh but, God. Like, like that kind of th th this battle royale. Well, that's just because it's like free, right? It, well, it, it, but no, but people spend a shitload of money on it to dress in different costumes and but, stuff. Like, but it is like I've got I do my think new... that the materialist explanation is like a low price point for entry. Yeah, you might not take the leap on something I, that complicated and kind I of a broke game is like that, that if they charged for it. I paid fifty bucks for. Yeah, my that's why they don't. The other games don't actually succeed as well as Fortnite did because they charge. Like Call of Duty Black Ops is not as popular as Fortnite because it's not free. Yeah. And there are a lot of people who just simply can't pay $60 for sucks. a game. Well, or yeah, so. no, like, yeah, but you say it's free, but I still paid 50 bucks for my Steven Paddock skin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, God. <laughs> my opponents, their sushi is comp every, every time. <laughs> but, uh, uh, so is it really is that is it really just popular because it's, it's free? Why is it still popular? I think that's a big part of it. Well, because like they so constantly long. reinvent themselves. So the game mechanics are pretty, uh, the game mechanics are consistent, right? It's a battle royale. You get dropped in. There's an element of like randomness to it. And you're trying to accumulate as many resources as possible. So that's, I think Hegelbond had like a piece on, I forget. He did, yeah. About yeah, how it's he like talked about, about like the late, capitalist, late capitalist element of it. scarcity, yeah. Yeah, so I think they do play on that a little bit, which is interesting. But um, the reason why it's so successful is because they take feedback like crazy from the fan base and they're constantly tweaking it. So um, the game uh, it, throughout the different seasons kind of changes uh, and it changes along with um, like user feedback. The, it, the mechanics are still the same. You're still shooting, but there are new guns. The dynamic is different. So it's almost like it's a new game all the time and it's free. Well, so, it well, might be a new game all the time and that might help you get some new subscribers and keep some, but uh, you're on the urge... I'm not talking to you, but Epic, Epic, you're on the verge of losing one of your most dedicated customers because Felix, who's been playing Fortnite 30 hours a day for the past year, is now on suicide watch because they 
stretch the res? Is that no, what they took is? away the FOV slider? Yeah, you they, took the the yeah. Yeah. they took away the field of vision uh, slider, so it's it's stuck now. And and Felix was very comfortable with his field of vision that he slid it to. Well, he's but, very unhappy. But yeah. I think there is something to I like. Obviously, like you get him hooked with the free sample, mm-hmm. so like the free thing is a good thing. Yeah, like crack. Exactly. No, I yeah, yeah. did not make that comparison lightly. Um, and then the fact that you acquire things is like very like it's like I, it does seem like collecting resources like maybe appeals to some kind of acquisitive thing, especially maybe for a generation that's like completely hopeless about like, you know, ever buying a house or getting married or having children or anything and like there's that. Also, there's also a lot of building in Fortnite, so you can sort of build a little Yeah, you can have a little you can have a little legacy for that game. The, the little know? pine deck that you'll never have. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it goes away immediately because they shoot it down. But, <laughs> but at but, least you you can have an effect on the world. I I think maybe it does like poke your brain in special little primitive places. But it's just yeah, it's like it's like the concept is you know, it's like a hundred people on an island, you team up you go to war with each other. That sounds cool. It's the it's the Lego part that I feel like. Yeah, I'm not I a fan of that. Also, I think you should be able to either kill your opponent or seduce them. <laughs> <laughs> and then at the end of it, you win either by killing all your opponents or seducing them all. Uh, so, uh, other than Fortnite, though, like what are the other what are the other hot games that the kids are playing these days? What, I mean, what are the you, cool ones? So it just it comes it comes in waves right so uh whenever whenever a new game comes out if it's really cool like all the streamers start playing it and everyone wants you to play it as well uh apex legends was a big one for a little bit but and i that's think basically that's the died same out. concept is for basically the same like- concept also a free game but they didn't have like cool characters or well it was every character had like a different ability which made it a little different than fortnite and there was no building and it was an fps game um, so we thought, or everyone thought that Apex was going to be the Fortnite killer, but Fortnite became too powerful. I mean, it's just, it's too consistent. So like nothing is, nothing is going to knock Fortnite No, yeah, off. you have like, League of Legends, and we're only talking about the American marketplace, because like China and like the Asian marketplace is entirely different. Like, um, what are they, what are they playing? They're all playing League. They, they really love League out there. Uh, and I think they play Overwatch still too. Mm-hmm. Um, but still it's like. It, it, it's the same basically like team up and like you always like there is no part of these games in which you are playing against the computer. No, yeah, like, these are all, all online. And yeah. like I guess this is like this is the generational like gap for me with like video games is because like when I play video games now, I I don't like playing the ones where you play against other human beings. Yeah, like, multiplayer want, versus single player. Yeah, like I want like a, a like a curated video game experience that's kind of like a like a sin like the last video game I got really into was the Resident Evil Two remake on PlayStation. You I know, mean, they like, still have that. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. a great game. No, I, I was, it's, it's really cool, but like, I it just stresses me out playing against other people because they're all too fucking good. And at this point yeah. in my life, I'm not going to get good enough at video games. No, to we enjoy both it. had a very intense like uh, Zelda period. Oh, I love And by Zelda. intense, it was the opposite of intense. It was a very Marianne <laughs> experience. And like, we had the thing where like we liked wandering around in a sandbox. And having the option to do things on the basis of like what we were up for that day. So it's like you were never going to be surprised with like a big boss. You might go do a little puzzle thing. You might go c- catch all the chickens or whatever. You might just so ride like, a horse. So like that's a complete, you might just fucking ride a horse across the map, whatever. <laughs> so like that was, that's a completely different like boutique experience where you can pick what you want to do in the game that day. And it seems like with Fortnite, you're immediately thrown in and people are yeah. trying to kill you. Uh, no, and that is the only thing that's killed. happening. That is the only thing that's happening is people trying to kill you. I played one time and it was honestly a little upsetting. <laughs> it scared you. Man. You get those gunshots and it's like, ah, quit shooting at me. I'm nice. Yeah, yeah, they don't I even have play a my gay elf either, game. which is kind of crazy. I mean, games like that, they don't even have tutorials anymore. They just literally drop you in. Like your drill sergeant just like threw you off the plane. You're in there. You're you're fighting you're in people the shit, trying to man. figure it yeah. out. Yeah, it's basically Edge of Tomorrow. Yeah. But you die and you just start another game. You die, just jump in another game. Yeah. yeah, live die repeat, baby. Yeah, I, I mean, I, but single player games still exist. By the way, they just don't make it. It, it well, requires a tremendous amount of time to to put together like a story like uh-huh. that. It, it still takes like five to seven years to make like a great AAA title that's single player, and the payoff is not 
as great as a multiplayer experience where you just keep throwing in like right. bullshit. It's capitalism Yet again, that e- has ruined the gaming industry. And uh, they, they've no, it's literally that though. And like loot boxes are another massive problem as well. I'm I think, pretty sure that it is five guys and their burgers and fries that ruin <laughs> the gaming industry. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like now that I have PlayStation. You know, I'm waiting for this uh, uh, Kojima game. I'm waiting for Death Stranding. And then I'm like, Felix, oh, when yeah. is this game coming out? And he's like, oh, you don't know what it's like to wait for a Kojima game. It's going to be yeah. like seven years before he gets done tweaking that. But I like this sort of like cinematic world that Kojima creates in like, like in the Metal Gear Solid games that, you know, Felix has got me fascinated in, you know, by default, just being around him. So good. But like, yeah, they're, they're great. And like, but, but the thing is like to write like a, a script and create that world like takes a lot of time and, and labor. Whereas like with Fortnite and Apex, it's like a sort of a template that's infinitely repeatable and, and variable and also like the sixty dollar like buying a game, like that's like the floor now. Whereas like instead of spending sixty dollars once to get like a disc or to download it, now it's like a thing where like you can get it for free, but you'll spend way over sixty dollars right. over the course of your lifetime playing this game, yeah. getting things like the 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 loot crates. But like, is in the Twitch community, are there sort of like a a gamer uh, rebellion against their exploitation of uh, via loot crates and skins and things like that. So Jim Sterling is a pretty decent content creator on YouTube. He's pretty big. He beer talks, nerd, the beer nerd was literally telling me to watch Jim Sterling. Yeah, videos, he talks about this quite week. frequently. I think he's a social democrat or like maybe he's a democratic socialist. I don't know, but he talks about this a lot. He talks about like unions in the gaming industry and, and all that. But yeah, it, it's there is a little bit and I think it's actually a perfect way to radicalize the youth. I'm not going to lie to like, because it immediately impacts them. Everybody hates DLCs. DLCs makes uh, DLCs make games awful. DLCs for what you guys, if you don't know what that is, it's downloadable content. So you're basically buying a $60 game and then you're spending another $30 to unlock additional parts in that right, fucking right. single player game. Like I already paid for it. Yeah, yeah, that you already paid for. and And it's not good enough. It's not like an entire game. And EA and like these big giant companies that merge with all these other smaller companies have kind of made this their business model. And then now we're moving away from that to the online like battle royale style where the games are free, but then it's the exact same game with like minor tweaks every month or so, uh, making it like an endless repeatable experience. But also you brought up like the labor issues. Like I keep hearing about these uh, these games like the new Mortal Kombat or wherever, where it's like to meet a deadline they're just like making people work like a hundred hours a week. Oh and yeah. They're, like they're mm-hmm. and like, like they're really like, like these programmers and people working for these video game companies. It's like, like really like hardcore exploitation. And like, there is, you know, no union for these people or whatever. Like they're just being like run. Well, like it's dogs. like a multi-billion dollar industry yeah. too. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, and like Ubisoft, for example, will um, show record uh, profits and then and I think they recently laid off like a quarter of their staff or something like crazy. So everything that's happening in in all these other industries you're seeing in the gaming world as well. And, you know, with automation, they're also suffering. Uh, like the the coders are also suffering as well. With the, the more the more efficient the process is and the less like the less they need artists and writers and story editors and whatnot the more people are getting fired mm-hmm. for no reason but yeah like another like uh, you know very easy to understand object lesson for like you know young inquisitive minds about like oh these companies are making um insane profits off these video games what do they do immediately with it lay people off they're not gonna like yeah. <laughs> reinvest it in the people who created the game or no, anything of course, like that why the yeah. fuck would they yeah yeah video games it's a uh, way of the future and you know uh i'm playing you know i'm Again. playing them now and I, I do agree with Amber, though. Uh, Breath of the Wild is like just, my favorite, just chill out. My favorite just, video just game. Just very Marianne. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, to close out today, uh, I've got a very, funny, a very funny story about probably one of our, you know, one of our favorite characters on the show, Sebastian Gorka. It's too, Gorka! It's too bad James isn't here. Uh, we just did, uh, or too bad this story didn't come out, you know, before we talked to James. But uh, Sebastian Gorka is very angry. He is incredibly angry. And That's he's weird, mad. because usually he's so chill. <laughs> yeah. And Incandescently enraged. And this is from the Washington Post, a little, little mini reading series here. This is, a war, this is a war for our culture. Sebastian Gorka anguished by gay wedding on Arthur. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's not that's not the uh, the fucking Dudley Moore uh, Burt Bacharach movie. This is uh, the PBS show about an aardvark. 
long-running uh, children's yeah. cartoon show. A yeah. show that friend of the show, uh, Stephen Crowder, yes, was, Crowder was, uh, a, was voice. a part of. Yeah, he was yeah. a voice Same. on Arthur. I wonder what his take is. <laughs> well, I can imagine. Uh, Arthur, also best known for uh, one of the, be- the the fist meme. Yeah. One of my favorite memes. Yeah. Really on good the one. Internet. Yeah. Getting tuned up. Yeah. So uh, Gorka, it says here, Sebastian Gorka, the former Breitbart editor and White House aide, goes live every weekday from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Time on the Salem Radio Network. I don't know why the Washington Post is just beginning this article with a plug for his show. Check it out. It's <laughs> killing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My man's killing it. He went from the White House to... It's an insightful, in-depth review of the news of the week. What is the Salem Network? Do you guys I'm know? I'm sure him? it's probably one of these, like, Online, you know, just insane right wing, like yeah, like like uh, what is it was it? founded by Cotton Mather. Yeah, <laughs> what happened? Did Sinclair uh, fire him or something? Because he, I thought he had like a gig at at Sinclair, Sinclair Broadcasting. Or yeah, my man, Gorka loves getting losing jobs. Yeah, <laughs> getting yeah. motherfucker <laughs> loves getting fired. Yeah. So it says here on Tuesday he provided a new raison d'etre for America First, the title of his show and the slogan for President Trump's approach to foreign policy, which was also used by isolationists and Nazi sympathizers before the Second World War. Again, odd thing to throw in there. Gorka's grandfather. Yeah, Shouts yeah, out to yeah, Gorka's yeah. family. <laughs> the reason the 22nd season of Arthur, the animated children's series about an anthropomorphic aardvark, Gorka, who brandished the insignia of a historically Nazi-aligned Hungarian group called the Vitezi Rend at an inauguration ball in January 2007, flew into a rage because the season's Monday premiere featured a gay wedding. Arthur's third-grade teacher, third-grade teacher Nigel, Nigel Ratburn, exchanged his vows with a local... Oh, t- well, I mean, that's... It's not the gay wedding. It's just he, he thought it was Jewish. <laughs> No, he literally no, he he actually calls them rodents on the show. I watched yeah. the video. No, he goes, these rodents are getting married, these rodent like figures. I, I was just like, dude. Oh, wow. Yeah. So uh yeah, uh, uh Nigel Ratburn is exchanging vows with the local chocolatier, an aardvark named Patrick. So not only is it a gay marriage, it's an interspecies marriage as well. No, you see how they're mind they're brainwashing our children? Yeah. You know, the great you, replacement is happening on author as well. It's <laughs> like they pass gay marriage and then people are gonna be fucking dogs. They're gonna be fucking aardvarks. Yeah. yeah. Well they uh, got that snout. Yeah, I was just thinking. <laughs> yeah. They got that snout and that tongue. They yeah. Super long you know what? They work for into, any gender. It's the dog. It really pill. does. I don't know. Be like a the dog like a pipe. Yeah. Be like a sexy the dog pipe cleaner in your urethra. <laughs> this is uh this is a this is a war for our culture. And that's why we exist here on America First on Salem Radio Network, Gorka said. Um, so he goes, uh, Gorka, who briefly served as a spokesman for Trump on national security matters before he left the White House in the summer of 2007, 2017. Saw something insidi- for talking about the Battle of Austerlitz too much. <laughs> uh, saw something insidious at work. The diversity showcased on Arthur fit a pattern of left-wing demagoguery he identified in everything from the revolutionary reign of terror in France to the administration of President Barack Obama. The, ideolo- the ideology on display in Mr. Ratburn's nuptials and the rest was that, quote, civil society doesn't exist, friendship doesn't exist, Family doesn't exist, Gorka maintained. Only permanent revolution. Again, talking about a children's cartoon show featuring a gay marriage. Yeah. The similarities between the French Revolution and, and Barack Obama is that they oh, both wanted... He's trying to catch his tail. They both wanted to do gay shit. That's what they, <laughs> that's what, like, this is what I don't understand, though. Like, Do, do they think that... like? if they hide the truth that gay people exist from their children as long as they possibly can, that they're just going to be, like, confused one day or something when they see a gay person? And yeah. I, I, it doesn't I, make sense. I really... It's just they're not... I mean, it's being... It's intolerance in the uh, literal sense that they cannot accept a public sphere in which some people are able to, like, you know, just exist outwardly. But I yeah. think I think that train has left the station. Gays have been high profile on television since the 90s. Yeah, no. Well, they have to know that this is a useless fight. It's just something to get people riled up. Well, but they're just magazines for children. Like they're like, "Oh, it's a cartoon, so it's the gay agenda. Right. It's yeah. gay right. propaganda. They're like making your children gay." Well, which is not even true, but also I mean, okay, well, gay people exist in society. What? Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, what do you what do you think? Like, how are you going to mask the truth from them? Not, how are you going to yeah. hide that? No, that's what's so weird about it. And I think it's like it's the same attitude towards like uh, 
abstinence only sex education where they're like, oh, if, if kids learn about filth, this filth, yeah. they're going to do it. Yeah. And it's just like, yeah. no, they're going to they're gonna do it. Yeah. I mean, like, this is a part or of like human Thatcher. life. Yeah, nothing gets kids going like your fucking sweaty gym teacher teaching you about, like, how Thatcher's to put on a Thatcher's commission on over. HIV. It really is. It's amazing. Had all of these old, like, uh, Tory freaks that weren't associated with public health at all and the round table trying to figure out what to do about what was very quickly becoming, like, a massive ec- epidemic. And... She didn't want to put any sexual practices oh, right. on there because she said they might it might give them ideas because if it had never occurred to her to do it, like uh, she, she she the whole thing she thinks of sex as a discovery or something, and then someone else brought up like well they should know that also like oral sex can like you know because people don't know about sexually transmitted disease at this point, and like. One of the Tory MPs goes, do we even know how many people are doing this sort of thing? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, exactly. And Sexy English if they people. they find out about it, you know, like, yeah. then, like it'll be like... A, like it would never occur to them. Well, but also, that's, also hilarious. I never think, what if I put that in my mouth? You know, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or what if the word came out of my mouth? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know, yeah, but that faster thing, she didn't want to have like... The, she's just like, the, the PM cannot sign any document that has the word sodomy in it. Yeah. And it's just like... <laughs> You think British people had to be told about sodomy? Yeah. Especially coming from the Thatcher administration? Come on. Wait, isn't that literally the reason why Japan still censors penises, though? Because, like, no one wants to be the brave uh, legislator that comes out and says, What's, what are we doing with this censorship stuff? Yeah, you don't want that to be your issue. <laughs> yeah. I'm no, who's going to come out? I have to depixelate the porno. <laughs> that is, yeah, that is not a dignified... It's, uh, kinda, it's amazing that, that these people are almost all Christians, because... The Christian understanding of sin is that it is inherent to humanity. We are all sinners. But this approach really does say that, no, you are a perfect, innocent angel until you are sullied by contact with something from outside of you. But that goes against the entire concept of original sin. Well, we have original sin, but like, you know... We have to also avoid the occasion of sin, a.k.a. the knowledge that gay people exist. See, that's just, right. that's not realistic, folks. I think it's it's partially like the Rick Perry problem, right? Like, I don't know if you guys remember, but he used to say something like, oh, you know, uh, avoiding dicks is like alcohol. I mean, not in those words. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing it, but he's like, you know, an alcoholic can't stop himself from drinking alcohol, but you got to fight it. And and I, I remember thinking at the time, like, no, dude, that's not, I'm not fighting my my need to have dick inside of me every day, <laughs> like like a fucking alcoholic. That's kind like, of a you thing. Yeah. yeah. So I think like partially, like, if they, if I see it, I mean, I crave it. Dicks are delicious. I crave it all the time. If yeah, I, I was see up to, it. For a while there, I was up to two or three packs of dicks a day. Yeah. It's just like, you Well, know. I remember um, uh, similar to that, uh, Rick Warren, the Saddleback Church guy who fucking Obama got to do his first inauguration. The Bareback Church God, guy. Yeah. That should have been fucking uh, clue one about where Obama's presidency was going. But yeah, he like he was asked something about like, you know, come on, like, you know, if you're gay, you're gay. Like and he was just like, well, you know, I've struggled with my weight. I'm like, I really like eating pizza, but sometimes I just got to say no to that pizza. <laughs> You know, yeah, it's just I mean, like, <laughs> that's, does that mean that he occasionally uh, sucks guy? Yeah. <laughs> like, I, it's, not, it's like, I can, I, once the, a month I can have pizza. And what that's if also that was I can it? Suck a guy's what if, dick. What if it, was, it was actually like they were okay with homosexual sex in moderation? <laughs> By the way, that's, that's not even a joke, but that's like actually what Ben Shapiro said on the Joe Rogan show where he was like, oh, well, if you're Jewish and you're gay, you have to marry a woman. And you have to tell your wife that you're gay, but you still have to wear it, marry a woman. Like you can't, you can't be Jewish and gay at the same time. Like it, it, it was insane that he's still trying to uh, justify. Yeah, uh, his, yeah. His no, there are homophobia. Catholics like that too that are like, okay, you're gay and it's not a choice, and God loves you. Now get married to a nice heterosexual wedding, which is woke, I guess. Right? Isn't that woke? Because they're admitting that it, like it's a thing that you are. It's definitely better than the complete <laughs> denial of the fact that well, like people are gay. Yeah. I think. More like bareback ranch. <laughs> <laughs> did uh, Asando? Did you see the uh, the interview with a fucking <laughs> with fucking? He's, he's so proud of himself. <laughs> Yeah. Did you see the interview with uh, fucking um, another absolute cretin, uh, Dave Rubin and Ben Shapiro? You know, Dave... we used to work together. Oh yeah, he was on. Yeah, he was on the Young play, Turks. Holy I used shit! To play basketball with the boy every Sunday. Holy shit! Even after he left and started talking shit, and he would still come to the Sunday basketball sessions. 
He's actually oh, pretty good at. I mean, he's not bad at basketball. Ball, ball his life. Yeah, he, <laughs> yeah. he did. Yeah. He no, and, uh, and and you know, Dave Rubin's like a, an openly gay guy uh, who's now you know fucking caping for like the most evil people on the planet, assure, yeah. assuring them that like, hey, I'm cool with you, and they're hey, they're cool with me, right? And it's like, dude, they will stuff you in a fucking camp like the first chance they yeah. get, dude. Like, did you, there was another. Thing people where, never learn. They're yeah. like, I will be the favorite homo. Yeah, like uh, Dennis Prager. Yeah, he really likes you, dude. Um, but no, he was talking with uh, uh, Ben Shapiro and he was like, you know, Ben, uh, you know, I think, um, you know, maybe like, you know, you move me a little bit on the abortion issue, you know, like, cause this whole thing is like, you know, open debate. And he's like, you know, I think I could, uh, you know, move you on the issue of like having dinner with me and my husband. And Ben was like, I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Yeah. Like, and he's you, like, can you give me dignity? Like I, I'll, I'll, I've listened to you yeah, rant on about how abortion so is. Cuck. Yeah. To be no, like, can you so please bad. like me. Mm. And what ben, what Shapiro said to him was like, you know, well, if it's just if it's just a party, you know, with you and your husband, and it's not a gay party, uh, I, I, you know, I could do that. What does he think parties are? <laughs> well, he was does like, does he think it's a key party? <laughs> he thinks if you get two or more gay people in a room, they immediately start having sex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh God. So uh, just to, to finish it out here with Gorka here, he says. Um, the permanent revolution pursued by Arthur Gorka steamed <laughs> had to do with. He does wear the same glasses as Trotsky. <laughs> <laughs> He goes, uh, the permanent revolution uh, had to do with family. He said his issue with Arthur, which began in 1996 and airs on PBS Kids, was personal. My children used to watch Arthur <laughs> killed my father. My children used to watch Arthur 15 years ago about a rodent-like creature that lived and had fun in his cartoon world. First of all, aardvarks are nothing like rodents, you idiot. Uh, yeah, get your uh, shit together. The, the new season of Arthur will have one of Arthur's teachers at school, a male teacher married to a fellow male rodent. Yeah, there he's creepy. He just he just sees things that are like rodent or Jewish like, and he's <laughs> and he's just like the rodents are at it again. No, he he made his children watch Arthur so that they were like less anti-Semitic because he thought that that was the representation. representation yeah, right. it's like it's good. It was woke for my time. But. <laughs> the right wing commentator and rabble rouser. Uh, you guys here. Uh, did you have any questions about there being a culture war, ladies and gentlemen? He asked his listeners. Did you have any doubt in your mind? Uh, it says it's not. <laughs> it's not the first time that themes in the animated universe have drawn conservative ire. In 2005, PBS chose not to distribute an episode of Postcards from Buster, a spinoff following Arthur's rabbit confidant, which include uh, uh, that rabbits are rodents, by the way. Um, which included lesbian mothers. The decision came after Margaret Spellings, then Education Secretary on President George W. Bush, raised strong and very serious concerns about the episode. Many parents would not want their young children exposed to the lifestyles portrayed in this episode, she wrote to PBS executives. I, okay, okay. Like, I, just <sighs> basic, like, you know, Tipper Gore conservative kind of thing, like, I get. But why does Gorka have to talk about it like he's delivering the tears in the rain monologue. <laughs> like because that's what makes it war, weird. ma'am. He is at war. It's a culture war for the future like, of civilization. Like, this this particular culture war issue, and it is fine. I'm fine calling it a culture war issue. Like, is the purview of PTA moms like why I are must you, marshal why my are you armies. sounding like Bane when you talk about it? You can't make it cool. Take control of your city. <laughs> I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. Rodents. Aardvarks <laughs> fucking and sucking rats <laughs> <laughs> on a PBS children's TV show in Doctrine. Uh, son, I think I think you get it right though, because it's like the Will and Grace ship has passed, and I think it's just all about like anything that has to do with children. Like they, mm -hmm. they, 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 yeah, like they think it's like educating kids about or just, gender ideology. But it, the thing is, like, it's not even educating kids. It's just, it's just like what really drives them crazy. Just, they're just there. Is the show is like it's not making a big deal yeah. out of it. It just assumes that this is a reality that these kids will encounter in their daily lives. So Most it's reflected. The unrealistic part about it is that kids would ever go to their teacher's wedding. That's weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, 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 that's bizarre. Sure, but like I don't know. Yeah. Hasn't he been his teacher for twenty five years? Now? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> what is this hell hole that Arthur lives in? This loop. By the way, how fucking stupid is Arthur? <laughs> He's still in middle school. Come yeah. on, you know dude. why? Because his teachers are gay. I just, I just love that you know the the grand conspiracy of the Frankfurt School and all these cultural Marxists was to 
make child shows like put gay characters oh my in god child yeah like, adorno would hate comes, arthur <laughs> yeah that's what it comes down to like this was the entire this was the shtick that's what they wanted and 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 they're finally winning they are i guess this so was the stupid. long march through the institutions and the institution was pbs yeah, yeah. but well, socialism that's yeah you're right Public broadcasting. Yeah, disgusting. Pubic broadcasting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, uh, I think that about uh, does it for this episode. Uh, I want to thank uh, Hassan Piker for hosting us here today and uh, having us over. Thank you and, for uh, having me, guys. And uh, the wonder- and all the chill and good vibes of the wonderful state of California. Yeah, oh, yeah. We're and, so uh, chill. And I can Ma- barely move. And Ian McShane for bestowing his pimp, aura and pimp, power pimp, and energy on me. Pimp. Pimp. <laughs> Just by being in proximity, just through osmosis, just I feel like I have McShane energy. Oh now. man, such a swagger! We love you. <laughs> I love you. Yeah, I love you. All right, goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye.